So I do want to clarify some things. I am a lawyer. I'm barred in New York. And what I am talking about is trying to give you a comparison of U.S. law. Now, Iron Mouse and Dark and Darker and Nexon, the battle is not in the Iron Mace. Okay, Iron Mace. The battle is not in U.S. Therefore, U.S. laws are not going to apply. When they did the raid, that was the South Korean government deciding they had enough evidence to raid. When they're doing the DMCA takedowns, when they're doing all that, it's coming from South Korea. And when they are suing, they are suing under South Korean law, which is different than U.S. law. So the commonality behind this, and I think the contention point is Nexon is a big company. Iron Mace is a small company. Uh, they have a 20-person team previously worked uh, so Iron Mace is an illegal battle of Nexon, the publishing company at which around half of Iron Mace's 20-person team previously worked. So 10 employees, 10. We're not talking about one, we're not talking about two, we're talking about an entire team. 50% of the Iron Mace team previous to working at Iron Mace and starting Iron Mace worked at Nexon. Now, in the U.S., uh, people would sign a non-compete. So the parallel in the U.S. isn't the trade secret thing. I was trying to make that's what it translated into, but really it's a non-compete. So if you work at a marketing agency, my marketing agency, we would have you sign a non-compete to steal our clients or to start your own marketing agency and like next door to ours. Uh, this A non-compete in U.S. law is, again, we can argue it, we can say how fair it is, but it is something used in many, many industries, including by Blizzard and by other gamer gaming companies in the U.S. You can understand why. Again, half of Iron Mace's 20-person team worked at Nexon. Now, you might be like, oh, there was no training. There was no, How do you know? You're not South Korean. You weren't working at Nexon. You didn't work at Iron Mace. It's just very suspect that half your team is, you know, working on this new company, creating this, quote, new game. So Nexon is arguing that Iron Mace is illegal, illegally using Nexon code in Dark and Darker's development. Iron Mace's offices were searched by Korean officials on allegations that the company might have stolen code and assets from Nexon, but Iron Mace said afterwards nothing was found. So that is Iron Mace saying nothing is found. The, the, the raid, if they found something, they could not disclose it publicly at this point in time. So now the Iron Mace employee posted GoFundMe for legal fees. We aren't a big-ass studio, and we don't have infinite supply of money like Nexon. Again, they're very smart. They understand what buttons to press. Remember, these are South Koreans. They're not Americans. So in America, we hate big companies, and big companies are evil. Big oil, evil. Big pharma, evil. So they're pressing that idea, which is culturally very different in South Korea. So when they're asking for donations, 99% of these donations are coming from Western countries. They're not coming from South Koreans themselves. Like I said, this is, you have to understand that this is in South Korea. Both Nexon, Iron Mace, they're in South Korea. But the advertising they're doing, oh, you know, infinite supply of money like Nexon, the reality of the situation is their end goal is to bleed us dry in court fees. Internally, we know this. They know this. Their lawyers know this. They have no real case that will hold up in court, but they pray that we fold. Our concerns is not the false claims that they have weaseled up and fed to every media outlet. Our game has been made from scratch, but we are concerned about being able to support ourselves through the legal battle they may want to drag us through. So, like I said in my other video, and this is something most critical, I was watching Asmongold, uh, they, they don't, the argument is not if your game is made, so you can have multiple legal arguments, right? 
hey, you ran the stoplight. You were speeding when you ran the stoplight. You crashed into a car because you weren't you were on your cell phone. So when you point, when you're trying to prove a legal case, you're going to try to prove every you 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 throw everything against the wall and hope something sticks. But the main argument I don't see Iron Mouse getting past is half the blanking team, including all the leadership, came from Nexon. They literally stopped working at Nexon, started their own company, and started developing game. In America, I can tell you there they, there would be some non-competes that would prohibit that, and it would be a automatic slam dunk. So even you know, I understand. Hey, we are the little guys; they're the big guys. We're you know we gotta stand up for the little guys and the little gamers, right? Their arguments and their GoFundMe is which was legitimate. They actually didn't realize didn't, didn't know if it was real or not. Look. I would love to say Nexon's a bad company. They they love gotcha games and they love all that. But even bad companies can be right. And if you started a company and it got relatively big and you had a team of let's say 200 people, three, two, 300 people, and everyone was working on a game and a, a group of 10 was working on a game and then suddenly they disappeared. They all just kind of quit at the same time started their own studio, and then they made a game that was topping these charts of Steam. Stream. Steam. Steam. Clearly, I don't play these games. Wouldn't you be like, wait a second, isn't that like the dudes that used to work for us on that one game and the day that they all quit together? It's not an issue, in my opinion, yes, the DMSA, they're saying, oh, it's the same stolen assets, and even if you start so it's diluted right it's it's a very diluted they're trying to dilute the legal issue even if you started a game from scratch okay let's assume that no assets were stolen nothing was the same everything was 100 percent different the question then becomes in south korea and this is where the trade secret again maybe it's a mistranslation maybe it's kind of a little bit more nuanced than that if you were to do that in a studio in America, that little Iron Mouse studio, Iron Mace, would be sued to oblivion because they would have non-competes. They would have in their contract, if you take a job with us in Nexon, you're not going to be able to build a game for another year. You're not going to be able to work for our competitors because they're worried about you talking about the trade secrets. So the trade secrets have a, they, they are important in terms of the non-compete. That's why most gaming companies in the U.S. have non-competes. They limit the type of projects you can work on. We're not talking about one or two or even five people. We're talking about half the team comes from Nexon. And they all quit at the same time in the relative timeline. Should they then be sued under... And, and Korean law, again, is trade secrets, right? In the U.S. law, it would be a non-compete. If you signed a non-compete saying that to work at Nexon, I needed to, you know, I, I promised that for the next year, I won't, com- I won't start a competing company. Uh, non-competes in technology companies are very, very common. Uh, and they are, for the most part, legal. Again, you, it has to be reasonable, right? You can't say you cannot start your game in 10 years. It's got to be a reasonable timeline. It's got to be a reasonable related to the what you were doing at Nexon. So uh, that's what my point is. My point is it is a trade secret issue in Korea, which in, translates in the U.S. to a non-compete. These people worked at Nexon. They signed the contracts. They were Nexon employees. One day, they decided, okay, we got enough of Nexon. We're going to start our own company. The question then becomes, what did they sign? And what is culturally appropriate in South Korea? Right? What is understood by the law? So even if it, non-competes were not in their contracts, if in South Korea, culturally, there's this understanding that you cannot, you shouldn't start a rival business, which I believe in South Korea there is that understanding, And that's where the trade secrets and how they're defining it falls under. Then there you go. 
That is my legal argument. Again, you can hate me. You can say, oh, I don't want to hire you as a lawyer. That is an ad hominem attack. It does not refute any of my arguments here. It just makes you look like a douchebag. <laughs> anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.